moving on to measuring health, really, um, because you know we want to kind of uh, measure where we are so that we can see where we're getting better. So how would you define metabolic health? Got it. Well, first of all, <clears throat> body composition and metabolic health are the exact same thing. So meta metabolic health is being able to dispose easily of incoming calories. And that means you want plenty of room in storage. So you want lots of room in your fat cells, uh, which means you want your fat cells to be shrunk down. So they happily accept incoming fat and you want lots of room for glucose disposal. And that's muscle. Like your liver can only hold hundred grams, but your muscle can hold four, 500, 600, 700 grams of glucose. So the very, very best metabolic health is super shrunk down fat cells. So basically being lean as hell and then tons of skeletal muscle, which allows you to dispose of a, just a ridiculous amount of carbohydrate. So <clears throat> the, the, the more body recomposition I have, uh, low fat, uh, low body fat, high muscle, um, the more metabolically healthy I am. Uh, you know, if I'm a, like a bodybuilder who's dieted down for a show and I've got um, you know, it's just no body fat. All my fat cells are shrunk so down that I'm like my leptin's low and I'm hungry all the time. And I have tons of skeletal muscle. That person is so insulin sensitive. I literally have um, bodybuilders in prep who their insulin, their fasting insulin is indetectable. Like it's below the ability of the lab to detect it. And I'll see triglycerides of like 20 and it just, uh, just obscenely low energies in the bloodstream and insulin in the bloodstream. This person has amazing metabolic flexibility and they could probably eat. Uh, we'll see um, really muscular people eating six, seven, 800 grams of carbohydrate. And it literally just falls into their muscles and is whoop, gone. It doesn't even take insulin to get rid of that. It just falls into the muscles down a concentration gradient. You have uh, bodybuilders doing a, a carb load uh, the, a couple days before their show to, to pump up all the muscles with glycogen. So they look bigger and they might up, eat up to a thousand grams of carbohydrate. And it just literally falls into the muscle as glycogen down a concentration gradient. They'll, they'll do a, a glycogen depletion first where they eat no carbs for three days and do a massive workout to just deplete every bit of glycogen out of their muscles. And then they can eat, you know, 800, 900, thousand grams of carbs and it just who sucks into their muscle and is gone. Uh, these, these very lean people, you uh, give them an oral fat tolerance test where you drink hundred grams heavy cream and they watch your triglycerides go up and come back down. It's like a glucose tolerance test, but with fat. And these people, their whole curve is so low. Like they get a tiny spike of triglycerides way back down to very, very low. That's metabolic health. They can just consume an insane amount of carbs, fat, whatever, doesn't matter. The calories just are immediately gone. The fat cells suck the fat right out of the bloodstream on the very first pass. The glucose just falls into the muscle down a concentration gradient without even requiring insulin. Um, <clears throat> so the very, very best metabolic health is the very, very best body composition. Lowest fat, smallest fat cells, um, tons of muscle and tons of room and muscle. And to get that, you have to not only do resistance training to build as much muscle as possible, but you have to do cardio to deplete glycogen out of the muscle regularly. So it has larger uh, glycogen stores and is more readily absorbing glycogen. So your very, very best metabolic health people look like bodybuilders and bikini models. They have tons of muscle from resistance exercise and protein. They have, uh, they're getting tons of cardio to, to deplete all the glycogen out of those muscles. And they uh, avoided non-protein energy calories like carbs and fats to keep their fat cells as small as possible. These are the most insulin sensitive people on earth. These are the, have the most metabolic health. That should be everyone's goal. Basically the same body recomposition that makes you look good naked, is giving you good metabolic health. So uh, <clears throat> body composition and metabolic health is the exact same thing. Now you've got all these over fat people who are pre-diabetic and, you know, <clears throat> I've got diabetics who are like, oh, I can never eat any carbs because my, my sugar immediately jumps up a hundred points. Uh, yeah. So that's not really as much about carbs as just being over fat, right? All your fat cells are full of fat. So that's why they're re refusing carbs. So that comes down to you basically can't eat carbs or fat because they're all making you metabolically 
uh, unhealthy. So the secret there is to target protein so you can automatically eat um, fewer carbs and fats to get thinner and lose more fat and then do more cardio to burn more calories, have an higher, higher energy flux, deplete your muscles with glycogen, do resistance exercise to build more skeletal muscle, uh, do resistance training and eat protein so you can build more skeletal muscle. Now you've got bigger depots for storage. You got more muscle, uh, emptier fat cells. And it's all about basically targeting the hell out of protein for satiety and lean mass, resistance exercise to build as much muscle as possible, cardio to deplete all these tissues of glycogen. And uh, <clears throat> that's kind of that's kind of the secret. And that's, yeah, that's basically all you need to know. So what uh, body fat percentage would you target for like a, a regular person, not a bodybuilder? <clears throat> right, right, right. So if, if you just put a gun to my head and said, what is the very, very, very best body fat percent for humans? to optimize, you know, function, feeling good, looking good, performance, metabolic health, I would say 12% for men and 22% for women. Now there's like huge genetic flux there. Like some people are just genetically way lower. Um, you know, some people are genetically way higher. So there's massive individual genetic differences. But if I was just looking at the entire population and you're like, what is the best body fat for overall, you know, and it's on a U-shaped curve because if you get too thin, then you know, women lose their periods, men's testosterone goes down, you don't, your reproductive function goes down. Um, but if you get too fat, the same thing happens. You know, men convert all their testosterone into estrogen, they have aromatization and um, women turn into men and men turn into women. And like, like it, it's a U-shaped curve and the optimum is right in the center. And if you were like, what is the very center of that curve? I would be like, okay, 10 to 15% for men, like 12 would be optimum. And then, you know, 20 to 25% for women with like 22 being just optimum on average. These are averages though. Right. Yep. So quick, um, if somebody comes into your, your clinic, right. And you you, you want to judge their health. What are the markers that you see as most important? Gotcha. Well, the, the easiest, cheapest, best thing is a waist circumference and more specifically a waist to height ratio. So <clears throat> you can measure your waist circumference. And the, the way to do that is uh, first thing in the morning, you know, you, before you eat anything, you use the bathroom, um, abdomen fully relaxed. You measure your waist circumference at the belly button. That should be less than half your height. So, you know, let's say I'm 5'10", which is 70 inches. My waist circumference at the belly button should better be less than 35 inches. And for men, this is not your pant size. Your pant size is going to be smaller than that. I'm talking about the very fattest part of your abdomen right at the belly button. And you want basically men or women waist circumference should be less than half of your height. Um, if it's higher than that, you've got major problems. Uh, the lower, the better, honestly, unless you're like dying of anorexia or something like that. But <clears throat> reasonably speaking, lower is better. Um, that is an extremely powerful measurement. Like it correlates amazingly well with anything else you can measure that's metabolic health, fasting triglycerides, fasting insulin, A1C, fasting glucose, uh, triglyceride glucose index, uh, home IR, you know, um, uh, all of your, any, any, uh, complicated, expensive lab work, metabolic parameter is going to pretty much linearly reflect waist to height ratio. So it's a very cheap, easy, low budget, good way to tell how you're doing. Um, I, and of course I've gotten to the point where I can just look at people and tell who's got a metabolic problem. So, uh, you know, and that you're basically looking at just that abdominal area at the belly button. So I have, um, <clears throat> you know, patients from who are skinny fat, who are, have very low personal fat threshold. They don't have very many fat cells. They can't make very many fat cells. Maybe they're from East Asia. They're from India or something. And they might only be five or 10 pounds overweight, but it's all just sticking out right at the belly button especially in men. And that's someone who's going to have a metabolic issue, even though they look pretty thin everywhere else. And so this, this, this waist size right in the belly button is probably the most important thing that your average person could be focusing on. <clears throat> and it's cheap and it's, well, it's free and it doesn't even require a blood draw. Um, when it comes to lab work, uh, things that I like fasting triglycerides are amazing. 
you want low fasting triglycerides. You want to basically fast for nine to 12 hours. Uh, uh, the textbooks say that that should be under 150 milligrams per deciliter, uh, but it better be under 100. Um, <clears throat> you know, uh, you want to be under 70 to be elite. Yeah, so anyway, fasting triglycerides, very, very good. Lower is better. You could check a fasting insulin level, but it's kind of expensive and, and uh, most people don't have access to that. Uh, but yeah, there you have it.